Daddy eats sloth. Daddy eats sloth. Daddy eats sloth. Munch, munch, munch. Hello and welcome to Daddy Eats Last, where we discuss the challenges of being a man in modern society and whatever hell that even means. I'm Kane, and joining me today to chat man stuff, as always, are Ryan and Manny. Firstly, gents, how are you both? Good, mate. Good. Not too bad. Had a pretty good weekend. Kids are a bit um, hit and miss with their, their attitudes and behaviours this weekend, so that, that's the, uh, the nature of the beast. Back to work uh, full time. And um, yeah, around we go again this week. How are you, Ryan? How's your weekend? Yeah, good. Very relaxing weekend after a very busy week of work. Today has been very typical uh, dink style. Sleep in, brunch, watch Netflix, Stan, uh, chill out. Yeah, quite nice. Very different to running around after attitudinal kids. Oh, for a sleep in, oh, for a sleep in. Uh, what I want to discuss today is uh, parties and sleep in this morning for me would have been fantastic. I had a, a mate's bucks night last night and I wasn't really even out that late or really even drank that much. And uh, I feel worse for wear. I just feel like I could fall, could have fallen asleep at half past four this afternoon. And it's one of those things with having kids. So let we discuss parties today, be it adult parties like bucks, 30th run, yours are coming up in the next sort of 12 to 18 months. Uh, I've got my 40th coming up this year. Uh, kids parties as well. Matthew, you've got a lot of kids under your wing that you be have organised parties mm-hmm. for before or, or will be in the yes. future. So I'll just throw it open about parties. Who wants to take the lead and party on down? I'll, um, I'll, I'll jump in. Party season for us is um, May and June. So we've got Eloise is um, in, towards the end of May and me is towards the end of June. And Sam, now that he's arrived, um, slots in nicely there in between both of those guys. So Traditionally, we've had um, yeah the first birthday is always quite a, a big one, um, and then right up until Mia went started going to school, she sort of maybe had a party every year f- up until then, um, and then when she went to grade prep, it was great because all they really do is you know they go for a play in the park after school somewhere, so not even at your own house, uh, invite the whole class around, and all in terms of catering, you just you know throw out some. They order some pizzas or, you know, they might um, just have some, everyone brings a, a plate to share and it's, it's nice and easy. But, um, yeah, so it's pretty hectic for us May and June. Um, and this year we've got Sammy's first birthday. So I was thinking about this last week um, just in terms of, you know, birthdays being, kids' birthdays being so hectic. I think the first one is, is not too, too bad because generally it's, it's a lot of babies there. Um, and just a lot of family. So in terms of, you know, the catering aspect, you don't have to do too much. There's no themes involved. There's no party bags. There's a birthday cake, but, um, you know, Kimmy likes to have a go at that. And my mum is, you know, a, a cake queen. So um, she'll always do one as well. So, um, yeah, we've, 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 I dare say Kimmy will probably be planning for that. She does a lot more than I do in that sort of area. But, yeah, for, for we've had you know, quite a few birthday parties over the years, whether it be attending or you know, uh, planning for. Now your eldest is six? Uh, six, yeah, seven this year, yep. Okay, so she's had obviously six, six birthdays because I, I can count past the fingers on one hand. Um, <laughs> did she have a birthday party for each of them or did she, she skipped a couple? How, how did it work for you guys? Yeah, so she skipped, I believe, um, up until prep, she skipped, I think she had one year off. Um, but every um, year other than that, she sort of did have a party. So, you know, there was an Elsa, Elsa themed party from Frozen thrown in there. There was also a Ben and Holly themed party for as well. And I think um, in the night garden was another one. Um, and then Eloise is turning four this year and she's had a party every year. So one, two and three. So she might have one for four and then probably maybe not one for five. And they've all been at home or you've gone out somewhere or outsourced it or something like that or they've all legitimately just been around home? Yeah, no, so they were all at home until last year, Eloise's. So we found, um, which is great, we found a, a hall not too far from us, maybe five minute drive, if that, um, and it has a park sort of attached to it. And this is great. You just rock in there, um, throw some streamers up. All you have to do is make sure it's tidy when you leave and that's it. So you've got no one running into your house, um, you know, no backyards to sort of, you know, clean up after everybody leaves because everyone sort of pitches in, you know, 
before they leave anyway at the hall, which is really nice. Um, and in terms of, you know, I think May and June up here, the weather can be a bit, you know, dicey. So you can't sort of, it's not like summer where you can sort of guarantee you can have nice, nice weather. So that's why it's nice to have it somewhere else as well. That wet weather option is, yeah, it's all it's someone else's place really. Yeah, I, I think having a birthday party, especially a kid's birthday at home, is just a fool's game because you essentially clean up the house for three or four days beforehand. Uh, the house gets trashed and then you have to clean up the house for three or four days afterwards. It's just, that's madness. We've just gone through that with the, the little fella's third birthday. And it was a 37 degree day here in Melbourne. I was cleaning the windows and sucking up leaves. Cool change. All the leaves blew back in and dust back on the windows. Like, no one's going to notice the windows at a flipping third birthday party. They might notice the cake. They might notice the fairy bread. But I didn't get any comments about, geez, your windows look good, Kane. <laughs> but you do that beforehand and then the joint gets trashed and you spend yeah, a couple of days afterwards cleaning up. It's crazy. Outsource, outsource it or go to a play centre or, you know, what, what was wrong with the old Macca's, uh, the old Macca's birthday oh, parties? Yeah. I used to go to them every second birthday was a Macca's one where you get a cheeseburger, you, you know, you get a photo with Grimace and the hamburger and then you're chuffed out, off, out to the playground for an hour and a half. Yeah, do that. Parents, parents were a lot smarter back then doing that, that kind of thing rather than hosting. Well, now half the kids wouldn't be able to eat the hamburger because they'll have a gluten intolerance or they can't eat X or they can't eat Y. So they, they might be able to eat the pickle now, which was the thing you used to throw out. Sorry, rant over. Uh, Ryan, what about you? Uh, you you're coming up to the big 3 in the next, not in the next 12 months, but in the next little period. Um, is this something yep. you're, you're going to do a party for or something for? Yeah, interesting. Um, I'm not sure yet. I haven't put too much thought to it. So, but I will do something big. Um, I will either get on a plane somewhere fancy and fun and enjoyable overseas or... Um, yeah, I will do a pretty big shindig here. So it'll be one of the one of the two. But I certainly don't have to worry about um kids' parties at this stage and prepping and running around and cleaning houses and that kind of thing, which is very nice. My parties generally go late in the night and wind up feeling like you do at the moment, Kane. A bit sore <laughs> and sorry for yourself the next day. I don't sound very kid friendly, but I, I like that a lot. <laughs> what about TK? Did she she's turned thirty in the last twelve months? Did she have a bit of a, a party, or was it again pretty a pretty low key thing for her? No, she got a plane ticket to New York, so she was pretty stoked. So we had a we had a small party here in Australia, and then um and then yeah, we were sort of her birthday present this year was to go to America, um, which is something that's been on the bucket list for a very long time. So yeah. Although I did um, a couple of years back, I organised a breakfast for her. So her birthday was on a Sunday. So we organised a Sunday brunch and she's never let me live this down because it was a surprise one. And the night before <laughs> we had a event at, um, uh, it was like, a, it was at Uni in Melbourne or something. So we had this event and it was one of those events where they give you a glass of wine and there's people constantly walking around filling up said glass of wine. And it was very like full of physios and that kind of thing. So she went to an event the night before her birthday where she had to sit there and everybody in the room's talking shop and she's just like smiling and putting up with it. So the solution to get through that was to drink a lot of wine um, <laughs> and sitting down, you don't notice this stuff. So you sit down for a few hours and have dinner and that and then suddenly you also don't know how many drinks you've had because there's people that just keep coming and filling it up the next day i drag her out of bed she's not too happy she's like why are we going to breakfast so early or whatever and um and then we get there and the few people first few people start rocking in and she just turns to me and goes i am going to some expletives kill you <laughs> and uh and sure enough absolutely hung over as shit on her birthday she had to be like yeah it's brunch um with a heap of people so i, I learned maybe don't do a surprise party in in that case a surprise brunch that is that's ballsy mate a surprise brunch i i, I didn't i'm not no, even sure about the concept of surprise parties but a surprise brunch is um that's yeah ballsy <laughs> Yeah, so I'd like teed it up with the cafe because we had a few friends by then that had kids. So we'd even organised like kids chairs and that kind of thing. And um, yeah, she was quite hungover. And I thought I was doing something really good because I'm like, well, the birthday's on a Sunday. Like, you know, what can you do? Oh, I'll do something on the day. 
Um, and because a few of our friends and that had had kids, I was like, this is perfect. Mm. You know, <laughs> they, they don't need to come out Saturday night. Uh, but yeah, suffice to say, years on, I still get informed of how um, painful <laughs> that day was. <laughs> <laughs> what time was the brunch? Oh, I was like 10. Oh, so you should have been walking. <laughs> oh, you must, that must have been, a, it must have been one of the, an absolute bottomless uh, glass of wine. God. Oh, it was a bottomless glass of wine. I don't think we closed out till about two thirty or three that morning. So it Jeez. was a it was a big one. But yeah, parties are interesting. I'm actually noticing as I get older that parties seem to die down. Um, and unless they're a big one, so like people are doing. I'm just noticing people are doing different things now for parties, um, as opposed to all getting together. Like a lot more birthday dinners or lunches or stuff like that is is what i'm seeing rather than actual parties and then i'm sure when kids happen that'll just change and yeah you go to a kid's party and who knows what that's like yeah you're right i I think it would be changing i remember when i was sort of i'd moved out of home every weekend was a party like somebody had moved out so it was a housewarming for that person then it was a birthday and there'd be a housewarming birthday or or some just any old excuse to rock around with like you know a six pack of beers and, 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 and drink those or drink whatever spirits were being put on or wine was being put on. So um, maybe I'm just old and I don't get invited to these anymore, but you don't see those sort of wild house parties spilling out on the street and being reported, even being reported on the news like you did probably 10 or 15 years ago. So yeah, you're probably right. People maybe tone it down and stuff and just doing really nice things like surprise brunches. <laughs> I can't even remember my 30th though, even going back 10 years. I, I, I had, I had dinner, I think, at a Thai restaurant with people, around maybe 10 or 15 people, but it was, it was just a dinner at a restaurant that I liked and, uh, yeah, had, a, had some wines and next, went next door to a, like a little um, pub for an hour afterwards and, and that was it. So I don't think it's a real big deal now. They, so you, you can think you can kind of do anything for birthdays, but kids, kids, on the other hand, get a bit demanding about what they want for birthdays and it changes on a daily basis. I, I said pirates, no, I'm frozen. No, 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 now I want a superhero party where... You know, outside of a surprise brunch after a big night out, I, I think you could probably do anything as an adult and um, it'd be broadly accepted as being okay. Yeah, well, my mate just had his birthday um, just had his birthday on Friday. And yeah, literally, um, we went out with him and his partner and had a great night at a, just a steakhouse here in Melbourne. And just <clears throat> something low-key and simple and had a few drinks. And yeah, I think... Um, the days of the the wild parties are becoming a bit less. I don't know what, why that is, but I guess just thinking about it now, yeah, like moving out, it was housewarming this and big event that, and maybe it's because we're all a bit more health conscious and or a bit more aware, but or all time poor. But um, yeah, I have noticed that, that I guess the partying things changed. And even with my friends now coming up to the 30th and talking about that, it's like, all right, well, let's get a small group of us and shoot over to somewhere or go away for a weekend or something like that rather than a just a big, massive shindig. Yeah, I have no intention of doing anything for my 40th at all, to be honest. Um, anything we've organised in the last sort of six months to do outside of maybe one has fallen over, um, be it the kid's sleep regressed and he can't really be left with anyone for that particular day because he's impossible to put to sleep. So even stuff we've organised to go and do, we've had to cancel you know, 24 hours or 48 hours out because of, because of kids. So yeah, I, I don't really have any, like I said, don't really have any intention of celebrating a 40th anyway, but even if I did, I'm sure something would come up and stuff it up. I think as we get older as well, maybe the milestone, milestone birthdays, we have, you know, big shin big, big as four, but for the, all, all the others, I think it's just, you know, a small group, like I said, Ryan family, just the people you sort of see on a regular, regular basis, you sort of drop off with a lot of friends. I think as you get a little bit older and, you know, as your family sort of expands or your siblings sort of have kids and, you know, that becomes more of your sort of your friend base um, than it once was, you know, when you're moving out. And yes, yeah, so and in the words of Blink-182, this, I guess this is growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Matty, we're going back to the kids' parties. Um, do both sets of parents, like both parents rock up? Our, our little fella had his birthday a couple of weeks back and we invited, I think it was eight kids. So in theory, 16 parents would rock up in theory. Um, I think we had one um, one father rock up um, who wasn't family. So, do the guys rock up to the kids' parties? Like, did, have they? Yeah, no, they, yeah, they generally they do. Um, 
It sort of just depends on, I, I guess, the, the situation with the, uh, with the, the, the mother and father or the, or the parents of the child, whether they're both working or they've both got the weekend off. Um, we generally have our parties for the kids on a, on a Saturday afternoon. Um, and yeah, most of the time, sort of the mum and dad will, will rock up um, just for a couple of hours and then yeah, do what they've got to do. Off they go. But I, I guess as the kids get older, they'll, like me is turning seven this year, as I said before. So maybe this year, I'm not too sure they actually, the age they do it, whether she'll, her friends will just get dropped off and then the parents will come back later and pick them up. I guess we'll start seeing that a lot more. Um, but yeah, yeah, as a rule, yeah, both parents sort of, sort of do attend. Always, always have some alcohol at my parties for, uh, for the parents <laughs> if they want to, um, yeah, partake. So I was never sure whether or not that was sort of, you know, the, the way you play the game, having the alcohol at the birthdays. And I remember attending my very first, first birthday party. And I think you might've been there, Kane. It was a guy we used to work with at Moore Stephen and it was at the zoo. And there was just a plethora of alcohol there. There was, you know, spirits. And I'm like, whoa, this is, <laughs> we're at the zoo, first birthday, and all this is there. Fantastic. Because um, I didn't have kids. And from, from then on, I, I always thought, oh, you know, it was good enough back then. So I don't do the spirits, but I always used to chuck a few beers in there. And everyone is sort of up here is, you know, happy to have a beer or two. And I've even noticed that um, at other kids' birthdays with, with me and, and school friends and things like that, there's, there's always with alcohol involved. Or not, it just makes it maybe just a conversation starter for the parents. They don't really know many of the other parents most of the time. So, you know, that's a lot easier to do over a beer, I guess. So that's where I went wrong. So we had coffee and didn't have a keg and we had a face painter and we didn't have a keg. So if I'd had a keg, then the, the blokes might have rocked up. <laughs> I've never had a keg, but yeah. <laughs> we had the red cups like it was a frat party. We just needed the booze. Or a beer pong table or something like that, yeah. Uh, we had, bubble, we had a bubble machine. And, and Ryan, just a little tip uh, for when you eventually have to go down this path. Play nostalgia. Fairy bread and sausages in bread. Kids just hoover up. So that's, that's just a little tip. Put up a fruit platter because you know, yeah, have healthy yeah. stuff, but just play on the nostalgia stuff you remember because inevitably <laughs> your, your friends will remember it as well and their kids will tuck right in. So that's, that's my only tip. That and keep your windows nice and clean if you're doing it at home. Yes, nice and clean. What are they? Um, I've always wondered though. Obviously, not being kid, kitted up yet. What are they like? Like, is it a couple of hours of just really awkward small talk with people that you just don't know, or is it usually pretty good? Or does does a beer or two help with those things? Um, because I've heard some people really like a couple of people that I do know that are older with kids. They're just like like one one half of the parents will just be like no nah, you take him to parties i don't want to go i don't want to deal with this like there's a few people that genuinely hate kids parties or maybe they're just sick of hearing frozen songs too too much but i don't know there's two scenarios here when, when you're the host you are you're quite busy running around um you know yeah you know five minutes to sort of each each mum and dad thanks for coming what have you been up to blah 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 and then on the flip side when you attend a party um that's when you've sort of got to, yeah, you know, introduce yourself to people, get to know people. Nine times out of 10, you sort of have met people around the traps at different events here and there. So, you know, you've got a few base things to talk about. Um, and it always does help, help to have alcohol. Um, but having three kids or, you know, Sam's just arrived. So normally it's, we've taken two kids to a party and it'll either be Mia's running around with all her mates because it's a birthday party that she's attending and been invited to. So we normally take the siblings as well and they're always sort of welcome at these kind of events. So you're, you're either Kim is running around after Eloise and entertaining her and I'm doing the talking or vice versa. So it is a lot of, a lot of small talk, but you know, it's sort of, you know, it's, it's not like you don't know these people. I think I've never really been to a birthday party where I haven't known not one soul there. There's generally someone you'll, you'll click with. Yeah, I usually volunteer to look after the kid or at least keep an eye on at least our kid. I'll, I'll watch other kids as well if they're doing something stupid, like, you know, trying to go down a slide back to front or upside down or something. Um, so that way I can avoid a bit of the small talk when I when like, the times I've gone. What I've found is usually, and, and we've only got a, a three-year-old who's just turned three, the linkages at the moment, um, just on the basis of him going to kinder, uh, kids at kinder, and um, that's something my my better half takes him to most of the time. I've taken him a couple of times. So she has linkages with people. So she'll kind of be friends with somebody at playgroup and that kid will be invited. So there's kind of a relationship between adults and then the kid will be invited unless there's a real sort of, you know, 
your kid and another kid really gets on it it's kind of still driven by a relationship between adults initially and then you know, you make small talk oh what do you do you know, i always use the um the ryan ebert line now what keeps you busy and people don't know how to respond to that at a kid's party <laughs> But yeah, it's 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 a weird mix a lot of the time. But there's usually one linkage to um yeah an adult relationship um in there, and then you just kind of saddle up and just make your normal small talk like you're a boring business networking event. And then when he when he goes to school, Kane, or the small talk moves on to you know school topics. What high school you're going to be sending to? You know, how's he fitting in? The idle gossip from from the schoolyard. I look forward to that. That that'll just take me back to when I was a kid. <laughs> What about you, Ryan? Do you have you attended many of these kid birthdays, first birthdays, third birthdays? I have attended a few actually. Um, not too many, but we know a couple of yeah, a couple of friends here who are now you know they've got their kids that are sort of one, two, three, four years old type thing. Um, and we have been we have been kind enough to be invited to these, which it is a little uh, weird for for us because. We're, we're very, um, I find that when you, there's a lot of, at those events, there's a lot of other people that have a one or a two year old and we kind of are at that age where we could have a kid or we could not. So then people are sort of sussing, sussing that out, um, which, which makes for some interesting conversation. But yeah, I just see, uh, in my experience from what I've seen is usually the parents are just enjoying that the kids are all running off going crazy they're probably a little bit worried about how much sugar they're having for the way home but um they actually enjoy talking to other parents because they get a little bit of parent time as opposed to chasing kids but i've also noticed there's a lot more um there is a lot more guys at these events now than i would have expected which is nice to see maybe they just maybe the guys just don't like me and they didn't turn up a couple weeks ago because of me (laughs) maybe i heard they just weren't Heard very, but no, like not putting on beer. Yeah, no, no, no keg. We're out. The thing was, Ryan, if I was to invite you to like little little Phil's birthday, like I'd invite you, but at the same time, I'd also, go, oh, mate, don't bother coming. Like I'd, I'm inviting you because you're important. Um, but you can have a pretty shit time rather than making that obligation of you've been invited and you feel obliged to go as well. So, I think you kind of have to understand yeah. if you are inviting someone who doesn't have kids, they're probably going to have a pretty shit time unless there's a keg. <laughs> we have we have had a few of those invites, which has been it's always very nice to get them and it's always very nice not to have to um fulfill the duties or you know, you you do kind of go because you, you get an invite, but that conversation's been had. So you go, you rock up, you maybe play with the kid for a little bit, you give them a present and you sort of do a token half hour appearance and then you then you can shoot off rather than feeling obliged to stay for three hours. Um, cause I do think it would be very different if we had a kid going to some of the parties that we have gone to, because also the other thing is that the parents that you're talking to in that anyway, are usually running after their kids. So you feel bad cause you're like, Oh, well taking them away and, and all that sort of thing. So it is always good to be like, Hey, you're important. Here's your invite. But, um, seriously, if you just want to come for the, the token 30 minutes, drop the present off, say hi and bye. Please feel, please feel free to do so. I've got, a, um, I've got a tip to get some more parent time that you mentioned before, Kane. Last year for Eloise's, when we went to that hall, Kim also decided to just hire this entertainer lady come for a portion of the party. <laughs> okay. It was <laughs> not that kind of entertainment. That was later in the night. But um, no, nah, not fucks play entertainment, no. <laughs> on at one dollar bills set all the kids down yeah make, you know balloons and songs and everything like that so she pretty much took the whole group of kids so the parents are like oh this is great they can sort of kick back watch and chat to other parents so whereas at previous parties you know we've had to sit down and do pass the parcel or we've had to correct come up with the games ourselves and you know spend half the party rather than talking to the people that or the parents you've invited as, as, along um you're spending you know most of the time with the kids sort of trying to entertain them so there's a tip yep. for the fourth birthday. Yeah, I've, I've run some of those parties before, back when I was sort of early 20s when I was at an indoor sports centre and I was the kids' party coordinator for, I reckon, about a month and a half and just chasing yeah. 10 kids <laughs> who hyped up on, you know, 
lemonade and sausage rolls around the, the indoor sports center. I was like, oh, just get, just get me out of here. But I can understand why parents coming to that would think that's fantastic. They were just sitting in the, the, the air conditioned bar while their, their kids are like pressed up against like the indoor cricket net, like their face going, ah, and I have to look after them. So yeah, when there's, when there's, when there's somebody who's being paid to look after the kids. Yeah. I, I could see why um, that would be quite a good one to go to. Cause you get that little bit of um, adult time, which you, you, you don't get. And what about work parties? They're ones that I, that having just come off December, they're ones that it can always be very um, interesting, I guess. Well, luckily now I don't have any work parties as such. And we have a distributed workforce, which means everyone's in different locations, which are not Melbourne uh, a lot of the time. So I can happily avoid that by just sending a hamper. But um, Back in the day, the work functions were always an interesting one where you're obliged to sit with, you inevitably just get put on a table with randoms because somebody goes, be a good idea just to mix the tables up. So, you know, that tax pers- person who has never spoken to that audit person can sit on the same table and make rubbish small talk for three hours after, you know, 25 beers from the keg. So I'm, I have good and bad memories about work functions, but now not having to do it is, is a real blessing. Not having to do it with kids yeah. is a real blessing. <laughs> well, you, Matthew, work functions? <laughs> yeah, so we're, well, where I work now, it's, a, it's quite a small team. So there's only uh, about 12 of us. So we do have a, a, a work end of year work party, um, which the spouse are in, invited to as well. So that can be quite big. But um, it's a far cry from the days of, yeah, when I used to work with UK and there was 200 odd people in the office and I oh, have great memories of parties. Of that there was nine nine years I was there and I think every year was it was a cracker. I don't remember, you know, getting home, you know, before probably two three a.m. at any of those Christmas parties. Yeah, I think we could probably oh, do a okay. we could probably do a countdown of Christmas party uh, top fives or top tens of uh, just things which have gone down at Christmas parties and fill up you know a couple of podcasts on that. And that's maybe something we will do in the future with uh, names re- removed for uh, embarrassment and maybe legal purposes. How about you, Ryan? Work functions. <laughs> Yeah, work functions, um, interesting. So I'm across a number of different uh, roles and, and positions and, and such. I have had a few, just like Matt had said, in terms of some really great, fun ones that have closed out very late. Although this year was very different to me because I took a new role and I took um, management of a team. And because I'm quite young on my team, most of my team not possibly all of my team are older than me. Um, I had to be very strategic with our Christmas party this year because I was the one that had to, one, organise it, but two, I was quite strategic and basically got TK to meet me and we'd book something else in at, um, at like 9.30, 10 o'clock at night because I was enjoying the party thoroughly and it was certainly, uh, uh, many of the team were enjoying the party um, so it was really getting to that point where they were all starting to get, have a little bit of fun, I suppose. And it was probably a very good thing for me to go, which was probably the first time that I've had to do that. So that was an interesting, yeah, interesting take. You did the work ninja. I did I the, did the I smoke did. bomb. I made yeah. up, I made up this year and I was <laughs> like, and, and sure enough, go to, work, go to work the next day, you know, you organize this on a Thursday because Friday is pretty light or whatnot. And, um, and yeah, they, they closed out pretty late. So it was probably a good idea that I didn't, I didn't join that. But no, I have had some cracking work parties, although it can be, uh, it can be very awkward when people suddenly are no longer than work selves. Like I think some mm. people put on a different side for them and then a different side comes out and just some funny stories that you see people do. It's alcohol, the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. Homer Simpson. <laughs> no, I, I do appreciate the work ninja. I ninja my own bucks party. I'm, I'm renowned as a, a ninja who will just, you know, be having a good time and then just disappear into a puff of smoke. And yeah, off home, while everyone continues on to the casino until 4 or 5 a.m. So yeah, the smoke bomb can get you out of a lot of things. It's quite <laughs> nice. Especially, especially when the smoke bomb's a legitimate spouse smoke bomb as well. If a spouse is involved, then it's it's legit because you know everyone understands the concept of the doghouse. And if you have one or two drinks too many, you can often end up in the doghouse or in Matt's case, a fully catered cubby house. Um, so, 
everyone understands a spouse coming to, yeah, to pick someone up. And I'd strategically booked to watch Die Hard in um, VMAC. So everybody was going, yeah, that's a pretty fair reason just before Christmas to uh, go and watch Die Hard in big screen and start the festive season. So I was able to get away with it pretty easily. Oh, well, gents, we've wrapped up. We've got, covered a lot of ground tonight, but that does about wrap it up for this week. We could probably talk about parties another time and explicitly parties around uh, when people generally walk down the aisle. So we might do another episode on uh, weddings and maybe one on bucks turns and hens nights around that. But that does wrap it up for this week. Do subscribe to Daddy Eats Last on iTunes. And thanks for listening. We'll be back next week for another episode, or should I say serving, of Daddy Eats Last. How's that for a dad joke? Catch you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.